All right, everybody, Paul Stetsowitz with the Weeks Aircraft doing a mechanics corner update on the BF-108. It's been a little while. Uh, it's been a busy uh, summer. Uh, we had a little hurricane we had to get ready for and all kinds of other little things that happened along the way. It's been kind of slow progress on the 108, but uh, we are making a little bit of progress. We're going to talk about a few things, uh, paint stripping on the fuselage. We're also going to talk about the special rivets that we got ordered and show you how all those uh, came out. Also, uh, the manufacture of some replacement rubber components that we needed and uh, also still finishing up some pieces that have to go to the upholstery shop. So come along and check out some updates on the 108. Well, we're going to talk about the paint removal on the fuselage of the 108. Um, we got kind of held up on the wings, like we mentioned earlier. We're not able to do too much on the wings at this time, so we decided to move on to uh, the fuselage. And, of course, we have to strip all the paint off of it. And I thought about this for a long time, and I had actually plastic media blasted the wings, which worked well and got all the paint off of there. But I was a little concerned about using that process on the fuselage, especially the tail section back here, because I felt that these skins are pretty thin. If there was any chance of warping these, I didn't want that to happen, because like we mentioned before, um, the 108 is a little bit different, and the, and the Messerschmitt 109 is also the same way. Uh, the skins back here on the 108 are not a single piece of skin that is attached to a bulkhead. And if you want to watch a good video that has this, there's a, there's a film on YouTube from Periscope Films that actually shows the construction of the 108. And it actually shows them manufacturing one of these skins. And what's different about this is that this skin, uh, it starts here and it goes to this end. And as it tucks under, it's actually formed and it actually forms the bulkhead itself. So it's not a separate piece of skin that you can just remove and replace. It's all kind of overlapping and it's made uh, very special. So I didn't want to risk damaging any of this. So I decided to chemically strip the wings. And that's what we decided to do. Uh, Eric's been helping me with that. And we found the original paint underneath, the dark blue color. And we actually finally confirmed that this airplane does have filler that was put on by the factory. Because we took it all the way down. And underneath all the original paint, there is a thin layer of fill that actually covers all the rivets and all these little tiny imperfections and actually the seam at the top here also. So that confirms all that. Uh, a lot of people told me that they never used filler, but that is false. So this airplane did have filler from the factory. And so basically after a chemical stripping, um, it's a pretty messy process. Uh, most of it comes off with a chemical stripper, but you're ending up with some little light spots here. And this stuff does not want to come off with the stripper. The stripper doesn't even want to touch us. It kind of just turns into kind of a goo. So once it's this point, we have to actually just take straight lacquer thinner and just pure, um, just working it uh, to get it off. So I'll kind of, kind of show you how that works. Uh, this is a long process and, and it has to be done on the whole airplane. But basically all we do is just take some lacquer thinner, a little scotch right pad here, and these areas that uh, won't come off with the stripper, we're just going to work in and stuff. And this filler and paint underneath here is all lacquer based. Uh, so basically with enough scrubbing here, uh, all this just eventually just comes off. As you can see, it actually comes off fairly easy. And uh, so we have to do that whole entire thing. Get that one last spot right there. Very tedious work. And that's how all that comes off. So that takes a lot of time. You know, final clean here. And then once that's all finished, there is some light corrosion that's on the skins. We're going to ask to etch all that. And when it's all said and done, uh, it's nice and pretty and clean. And uh, let's go check out the other side because the extra side of the tail uh, is finished. So let's go take, out, take a look at that and see what the finished product looks like. All right, so here we are. Uh, with the right-hand side of the fuselage of the 108. And you can see, uh, all cleaned up. And I tell you what, for an 81-year-old airframe, uh, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. It's got some issues here and there, some small little dents, uh, little scratches, and a few things. But overall, uh, I was actually pretty surprised how, how nice it came out. Um, and another thing that was uh, kind of interesting is we talked about the airplane having filler. And after stripping all the paint off of the fuselage here, uh, I can see why they actually use filler because some of the skin work in the riveting is not the nicest. It's, you know, you get some waviness around the rivets. You have a seam over here where the two pieces of skin meet. Those pieces are a little unaligned. So I could see why they wanted to possibly 
do some filler, kind of clean it up uh, and make it a more uh, cleaner airframe. But uh, very pleased with the way it came out. And we're gonna continue with the other side and then we're probably gonna continue with chemical stripping uh, probably all the way up uh, to the firewall area because again, I'm concerned about these skins. And as you can see, the, the whole fuselage is actually pretty thin. I, I, I can't imagine this is more than about 25 thousandths. So it was a good call to chemical strip it. I think the plastic media might have did some slight warping to it. So I'm um, very pleased with the way it came out. So basically uh, making good progress there. We're going to continue getting the rest of the paint off the fuselage. But uh, let's go talk about some other things we're working on, including some uh, things we're getting ready for the upholstery and also uh, the special rivets that we had made. All right, we're going to talk about a couple things uh, in this area of the shop. And first thing is the special rivets and the dimple dies that we have to have made for uh, the making of the new skins for the 108 wings. Uh, we mentioned that there was a company that I found that actually was making 120 degree uh, flush rivets. But when I got those rivets, I realized that they were actually a smaller diameter head than what was in the airplane uh, originally. And that's basically what it looks like here. We'll do a little close up on that. If when, I, when you mic this thing, um, this rivet head is 7.6 millimeters. And I noticed on the airplane itself, on the wings, that it had a bigger head. So I actually had to go to the back to the river company and ask them if they could manufacture the same river but with a bigger head. And then they did that for us. And this, of course, mics out to what it's supposed to be. It's about 8.4 millimeter, uh, which isn't a big difference. But if you put them next to each other, um, it's quite obvious um, that there is a size difference. So we got all those. Very happy about that. So we're uh, making progress there. Another big hurdle we had was uh, dimple dies. Again, the airplane has 120 degree, which is non-standard for uh, most airplanes and I contacted some people and some people just uh, either didn't want to help me or didn't have the time but luckily I found somebody uh, my friend Chris Evans a shout out to Chris Evans down in New Zealand uh, he's a machinist does a lot of specialty work on P40 parts and components and I talked to him and he was actually able to make some 120 degree dimple dies for me and this is basically uh, what they look like it's a male and female die now a lot of people look at this and go what do you talk about a dimple die well on an airplane that is flush rivet. That means the skin and the rivet is flush with themselves. Um, the skin has to be either countersunk or dimpled. Now, on a very thick, heavy skin, like 40 thousandths and up, it's actually cut with a cutter that actually puts a little uh, countersink into it that the rivet sits in. But on very thin skin, especially on this aircraft, which is about 20, 25 thousandths, you can actually just use a dimpled eye. And that's what this is. Basically, it just takes the material in between and it just smashes it down and it pushes in uh, a little bit of a dimple for the rivet. A good example of that is a little piece here that I did. I drilled some holes right here, which is I believe four millimeter. And you can put the dimple dies either in a squeezer like this or in a riveting machine, which is an air driven device we also use. Um, but for a lot of jobs, you can actually do this. And it's a very simple process actually. You just uh, put it through the hole like that, line it up, and you're just gonna give that a little squeeze like that. And you just take it out and the hole is now dimpled. So now you take your rivet that we just had done, you can place it in and hold it, and you can see it's nice and flush. Now on the German airplanes, I've noticed that it's not a super smooth surface. Actually, the rivet actually stands up a little bit, which is normal for, I've noticed on some of the 109s and the 108s um, that I've looked at and other people I've talked to, they said this is kind of the norm for the German airplanes. So we're not too concerned about being completely flush. And of course, once you rivet it down and you buck the back side of it, it is gonna knock that down some more and make it a little cleaner. But that's basically the whole process there. We have what we need now uh, to get started on that. Once the weather cools off a little bit here, we're gonna get back to the wings and start cleaning out some of the uh, paint from inside the wings. We're gonna start actually making some new skins that we need and start making some progress on that part of the airplane. Another issue that we have on a lot of these projects is the reproduction or finding replacement rubber components. Of course, you have on an 80-year-old airplane, the rubber part is not going to be in good shape. It's going to be deteriorated. Uncommon airplanes, common restorations like you know, North American T6, Mustangs, P40s, Corsairs, all these airplanes that are very popular, there have actually been people who are manufacturing all these uh, replacement rubber components. But of course, on something like this, the 108, not a big call for that. So. I'm kind of on my own here. I'm trying to figure out what to do because I had two things I had to have made. 
One of them was the uh, rubber bumper that goes on the fuselage of the 108. When you open up the hatch door to get inside the airplane, the door swings open and it actually goes up against a little rubber bumper. And that rubber bumper is attached to this phenolic piece, which kind of sets it off in the fuselage. Um, this little metal piece uh, goes on there and basically once that's in place, this little rubber piece was just glued to the outside of there. So when the door opened, it hit that and it didn't damage the door or the side of the airplane. Well, as you can see, um, the original rubber piece is deteriorated, it's fallen apart, it's all crumbly. So how are you going to reproduce that? You're not going to take a piece of rubber and sit here and try to carve that out. I mean, you could do that, but it's not going to come out very nice. It's not going to be uniform. So of course, nowadays we have uh, technology computers that help with this kind of thing. And I actually uh, have a relationship with somebody who actually takes the original part um, they actually fill it, paint it, and they actually do a 3D scan of the part. Once they have that information, they can send it to a manufacturer, and they can simply just manufacture the component in various different ways. And that's what we did. So we sent that off. Um, there's the new uh, rubber bumper piece. Of course, I still have to do some little dimples in here to glue it on, but as you can see, it's very uniform, very clean piece. Um, looks like a manufactured component. So that came out very nice. Another piece that we had to do was um, the slat bumpers. Um, the wings have the leading edge slats. These bumpers are attached to the bracket that attaches to the slat. And when a slat opens and closes, you don't want it slamming back up inside of the airplane and causing damage. So they put a rubber bumper on it. Uh, original pieces there, again, in poor shape, hard as a rock, crumbly. And again, the same process was done. It was actually scanned and information sent and a nice, perfect piece uh, manufactured. And once that's all done, kind of give you an idea of the whole process here. Going back to what we did, we had the original bracket that came off that was stripped of its old paint. It was cleaned. It was checked for any damage, corrosion control. The hardware that we talked about earlier uh, sent out, plated. That's all back, original hardware, and then the new bumper piece. So that's basically all, everything going back together again. This has to be tightened up in safety, but basically this part is almost finished and ready to go back into the airplane. So that is the, so the goal. So that people talk about how does modern technology help us in this regards, uh, reverse engineering take, comes into play. We don't have the ability to do that here. So we outsource it to other people. And that gives you an example of how we manufacture some uh, rubber components for these restorations. Let's go talk about some uh, pieces that we're getting ready to take back to the upholstery shop. Uh, we dropped off some other things to, uh, to the upholstery shop uh, a few months ago but there's a few other things I had to get ready. So let's take a look at those pieces. Well, we're gonna talk about a couple things we're working on here as far as the upholstery shop. Uh, we've been dealing with the upholstery guy. Uh, he's actually started doing some work on the pilot and co-pilot seat cushion bottoms. Those have come along very nicely, um, but there's still a lot of other things that I have to get off to him. Uh, a couple of those pieces are right here. Uh, this is actually the bottom, the rear passenger uh, seat support. Uh, and it is wood. And of course, we took it to the upholstery shop, dropped it off to him. He removed the upholstery, the old leather work off of it, and then he gave it back to me. Again, this was very similar to the wooden supports that go under the pilot and co-pilot seats. And I, initially, they looked fine until I just started kind of playing around with them. And I realized that, again, it, has the, it had the same issue that those pieces had in that the, all the glue that held this thing together was basically coming apart as 80 year old glue and go, of course the glues back then weren't good like they are now and so basically you had to make the decision to completely take it apart clean all the components and then glue it back together again uh, there was also damage uh, to this piece um, right here in the center uh, this is a place where somebody probably stepped on the seat uh, incorrectly or got into an area that was kind of weak and they actually broke the skin right here and they broke this piece of wood right here. There's actually the original uh, top skin piece. You can see where it's um, broke. Uh, someone actually did a little makeshift repair and I knew it was repaired because um, these pieces that were in there, this is actually up inside of here, um, did not look like the rest of the components so I could tell that this was not an original piece. So when I came time to redo this, I just eliminated this because this was not supposed to be there. Um, Pretty cool though, I'm pretty, pretty proud of this piece. There's actually about 67 individual pieces of wood uh, in this, and I only had to replace two pieces of wood, and that was this piece right here and this long piece here that was um, broken. Other than that, all the original components, I did a couple small repairs to these end pieces, um, but what you're looking at is basically 
uh, all the pieces that were built when the aircraft was manufactured in 1938. All glued back together again, uh, sanded, uh, varnished. This took quite a while. This is probably this is probably like a week and a half worth of work uh, right there. So that's ready to go back to the upholstery shop. Now the piece that's associated with that, of course, is the the rear back support piece that goes right along with that, and that's this piece. Now this is actually manufactured from aluminum, and the skin is magnesium. Uh, this came back from the upholster, uh, stripped it all off, got all the old paint off of it. Um, no real problem, except that the magnesium itself had some light corrosion that was worked out. And then before I can actually paint this again, it has to go through a little bit of magnesium treatment. I finally found the product to do that, because there used to be another product called Magnadine, which you can't get anymore, but now uh, it's called um, Bondurite Magnesium Aero, and this has to be mixed with some water uh, solution, kind of applied. You want to, what you want to do is you want to get this uh, light material back to a darker color, and that actually gives protection to that magnesium skin. So pretty happy that this original piece of skin uh, was not too corroded, and we're able to save that. So that has to go through the process. It will get primed and painted, and then those two pieces will be dropped off to the upholstery shop so we can continue uh, doing that. So those are coming along very nicely. Uh, a couple other pieces that we have to do are the components that uh, actually tie in or hold in the rear windows on the 108. So let's take a look at those. Well, we're going to talk about uh, one other item that we have to uh, drop off to the uh, upholstery shop, and that is um, these pieces. These are very interesting. These components are actually the inside wooden frame that holds the plexiglass rear window on the aircraft. And these pieces are pretty amazing, actually. They were actually, you can believe this, uh, carved out or machined out of a single piece of laminated wood. They took a solid piece of wood, and then they had a machine that routed this whole thing out and made this shape. And it must have been placed in a steamer because it has a, of course, it has a slight curve to it, which conforms it to the fuselage shape. Also, another interesting thing, this is actually the old the window itself, and the window itself just lays inside because they actually machined a little uh, groove here, and that plexiglass uh, just lays inside of there like that, and then that whole thing is placed up inside, and then it's screwed, and it actually sandwiches the plexiglass between the, this frame and the uh, fuselage. What's interesting is the plexiglass itself is nailed into the frame. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen that. There's little tiny holes here, and they just took and they just nailed that plexiglass into place, uh, which is kind of interesting. It's going to be fun to try to uh, to try to do that without breaking the plexiglass. So these pieces, when I took them out, uh, were in pretty good shape. But originally, they were actually wrapped in leather. They were actually wrapped in a, in, a, in, in the same color, blue leather, like the rest of the interior. But unfortunately, somebody along the line had painted it with some really cheesy, cheap blue paint and it looked awful and I was hoping I could actually maybe clean that off and save the original leather that was on there but it was too bad the leather was in poor shape and also I noticed that the wood itself was starting to have some issues so I removed off uh, off the leather off each piece uh, which was actually very time consuming because it was glued on there pretty well and in the process of removing the leather it actually wanted to lift the very top layer of laminate off the top of each one of these Luckily, that came off in basically a few pieces. It didn't break anything, but I had to glue all that back down again and then sand out the piece nice and smooth. And then to give it some protection, of course, uh, a nice coat of uh, varnish. And that's the opposite side. Now, this has to go to the upholstery shop. I'm going to talk to him about recovering this in leather because that's the way it was originally. But in some ways, it's almost nice to leave it the way it is. It'd be kind of cool to have it in the airplane with the nice uh, natural wood. So we'll see if he can cover it in leather like it was originally. We'll probably go that route. But if he can't, uh, we may just go back and leave it uh, the natural uh, wood. Cool piece. Glad we were able to save that because I tell you what, if you had to make those, boy, that would take a lot of time. It's something I couldn't do. I'd have to give it to a wood specialist. Maybe Ken could do it. But uh, uh, a good thing that we were able to save those original components. Another thing that's kind of associated with the windows and everything, we talked about it before, is on the window blinds. Uh, we had the original pieces uh, that came out of the airplane, but they are, of course, in pretty poor shape. There's the original. Uh, we were able to source some fabric at uh, Joanne Fabrics. Ran into a very nice uh, elderly lady there that actually helped me find some 
uh, fabric that was very close to this. And she was actually able to make the pieces for us and remanufacture uh, the blinds. There's actually four of these and you can actually see a beautiful job she did. And we're actually able to use all the original brass rings uh, that were on the original pieces. So um, I'm very, very happy with those. She did a fantastic job of uh, manufacturing and pleating those pieces. So those are ready to go back into the airplane too. So as you can see, making some progress. Uh, a little slow, the summertime's been a little slow. We've been involved with some other things around the shop lately, but uh, hopefully uh, we're gonna continue with the fuselage uh, and getting the rest of the paint off of that. I think also we're gonna pull the instruments out of the airplane and send those off. All the instruments have to be overhauled. Uh, I believe we're gonna have to send all of those to Germany uh, to get done correctly. So that's gonna probably take place there too. So we're gonna slowly start taking some components off of the fuselage and then here in the next month or so, hopefully get back onto the wings and make some progress on that. So check back in a couple of months and see some more progress on the 108 project.